I want to talk a little bit about Pascal's Wager. And if you don't know about Pascal's Wager, you should, because it's famous. Pascal said we should all believe in God because we don't have much to lose and have lots to gain from such a belief. If we don't believe in him and he doesn't exist, then our correct disbelief might save us a little bit of time that we would have otherwise spent in worship. And if he doesn't exist and we believe in him, then we would have wasted a small amount of time praying to someone who isn't there. Yet if God does exist and we don't believe in him, then we will face an eternity of punishment. And if we believe in a God that does exist, we stand to gain infinite reward. So we should just believe in God, the story goes, because we have not much to lose if he doesn't exist and everything to gain if he does. It's a wager. It's betting on God. And uh, I always thought that this was a little bit strange, though, and, you know, others have poked holes in this thought experiment throughout the centuries. Um, but I don't want to make any claims here about the existence of God, necessarily. I just wanted to point out that, as a wager, it's a little bit iffy, because it presupposes that this God you believe in is the kind of God who rewards people for believing in him. Um, and he might not be such a god. And if he's not that kind of god, he could still exist, but then the wager would be kind of irrelevant if we wagered our belief on this god. Uh, we can say, hey, I believe in you, and he'll say, okay, so I don't reward people for that. I don't actually care what you believe. I'm god. And I tend to imagine that if a transcendent being exists, he's probably one who doesn't put a whole lot of stock in our particular beliefs. He's probably more concerned with his own transcendent thoughts, and he's not probing for upvotes and likes. He doesn't want us to subscribe, necessarily. He doesn't care because he's God. He's going to be releasing content regardless of how many subscribers he has, okay? Anyway, so I was talking to my sister about this wager, and I was saying I, I could actually imagine a hilarious pagan god who rewarded us for not believing in him. Like, this is a god who puts a high priority on empirical data and empiricism. He's an empirical god. And he's like, look, I'm god, but you don't know that because you live in an empirical wasteland devoid of evidence. And for those who require proof of God, they need to have this God materialize in front of them. Or, you know, that's actually the whole point for a lot of religions, is to believe in God in the absence of such a manifestation. That's where faith comes in. You're not getting any sensory corroboration indicating that God exists, but the game, or the test, is that you're supposed to keep on believing in that God regardless. So, anyway, the god that I imagined for this altered or upgraded Pascal's wager is um, a god who is not impressed by that leap of faith. He would say, look, I put you in this sensory deprivation chamber, and all the evidence that you have been given is in support of there being no gods. You've, you know, lived in a world of Walmart and Netflix and Axe Body Spray and TikTok videos, and there were no gods in your life. So why are you imagining that they exist? I was testing you to see if you could be loyal for once to your five senses, and you failed the test. Anyway, you get the idea. But to be honest, I think there's something inherently alien about the first type of God, Pascal's God, who demands belief, who subjects you to this test. And furthermore, I think that there's something kind of slightly servile and slavish about the kind of person who seeks reward by virtue of professed belief. Such a test is alien to paganism. I imagine the classical pagans had a more Heraclitian view of divinity that underscored becoming. 
where nothing stands still. And so the test is not really to try to encapsulate the static God image in a scrapbook like a Lepidoptera collection of belief. Truth is what's made. Homer has license to recreate the image of gods as an artistic act in fluid becoming. Anyway, this, uh, this idea of a god that privileges non-belief might seem a little bit silly as a thought experiment. But to be honest, I don't see the god that rewards people for not believing in him any more believable or any more likely than a god that rewards people for believing in him. And uh, I just thought this was a take on Pascal's wager that I haven't heard anyone making. And I just thought I'd throw it out there to the gang to see what they thought of it. <laughs>